Hello and welcome to this episode of The Circularist where I'm speaking with Ollie Frost, a singing sensation and many other things. Um, so let's dive in. So Ollie, I'll just be transparent with the audience. We are meeting for the first or talking for the first time right now. So this is very authentic. Um, I'm so thrilled that you've taken time out of your world to join me. So Ollie, I'm going to run through. Uh, we're going to we're going to go straight out of the gates with this. So I've the internet has told me some things about you. So it's told me that in 2015 you launched a homeless campaign to help women uh, access sanitary protection. You got a hundred thousand signatures. It went to Parliament in 2018. You um, you made a bid to sell your all your private data on eBay. Also in 2018, you launched Life Faker, which was um, a platform that sold pictures to make it easier for people to, to, to fake out their lives with lovely photos. And that came about, well, you can tell me how that came about. It's a very interesting backstory there. And then also in 2018, you, um, you took yourself onto one of the biggest stages in the country, Britain's Got Talent and you were playing your recorder, and you went viral for that. In 2020, we uh, started to see from you climate songs. You even got Greta Thunberg to record the Macarena to one of your songs. Humanity, when we're starving in deserts and drowning in seas, COVID-19 will seem like a breezy ocean. I'm going to hand over to you to talk about what the internet doesn't tell us about you. But what, reading this, I would really love to share with our audience what drives you, what gives you permission. I don't see any hint of imposter syndrome coming from your quarters. Um, so over to you, Ollie. Um, yeah, we all have an imposter syndrome, I think. Um, but I suppose that first example you gave of the the homeless campaign in 2015 was um interesting to me because that was a campaign that had quite far-reaching um impact and yet it was kind of created by me doing something which i knew better how to do which was making websites at the time and so that i get i guess got me interested in in thinking about how yeah, you doing something on your own can encourage other people to do something else that they're good at. Mm -hmm. Um, even if your, you know, natural place isn't in um necessarily like charity work or protesting or something, you can do work that's adjacent to that, okay. which encourages other people to do things like that. Um and then there's just a very long trail in, in the story you described of trying to find a project. Um, that had some longevity or that was interesting enjoying to do at the same time mm. as being something that um, maybe needed to be done. I want to ask you something Ollie all of the projects that you that we just heard about those issues are are very pertinent it's about justice and fairness and access and equality and it, these are some of the things that sort of fill me with um an anger that people should have to experience such difficulty or people are living such compromised lives. What drives you? Is it an anger? I mean, how do you, is it justice? What is it that's your, where's, what's your fire made of? <laughs> um, yes, I suppose increasingly anger is what I feel about these things, but um, I guess it comes out with a different emotion, which is, um pointing out things which are, are ridiculous right. um and i guess i try and create things that would appeal to me because i don't know if i necessarily respond to um anger or necessarily like sincere discussions of topics and that's just maybe that's just what i'm um made of and maybe other people are made of that as well so yes. i am um, I don't necessarily see this way of communicating as the way to communicate, but it's it's just um, 
something that works for certain Normal. people. So you take these um, very gut-wrenching issues and turn them into song and satire that's very accessible to people, very difficult topics made very accessible through through your songs, I think. Yeah, um, I think I'm usually, I mean, I can't, ex with climate change, for as an example, I think it's, you know, reading a book about climate change can be somewhat dry experience sometimes or stressful or many things and I don't know if that's it's a big ask for everyone to do so I guess it's like mm -hmm. sometimes I'm just condensing some of that into a minute long or a minute and a half long Amazing. Um, song that gives I guess makes it more accessible. Powering the things we run, all the stuff that costs the earth, what price them to reflect their worth. Then fossil fuel subsidies could fund some things we really need. Public transport could be free, carbon capture hurts a tree. Grow food more efficiently by heating plants for energy. Maybe value more than wealth, community, or mental health. Right the wrongs of time and space. Sure, why not? You may as well. I love your songs. I think they're 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 good to listen to. They're well written. They're just. They're great songs, actually, and they they reach people. They connect with people. So, um, so, so, Ollie, you're you're a very competent songwriter. Um, you've talked about building websites. What's your What's your background? What equipped you to write songs and produce and make websites? Um, I don't. I don't. I don't particularly have like a, a qualification. I did a a philosophy degree. Um. And I also um, worked in advertising for a time, which was kind of um, um, was writing mainly. But I guess in my own time, I've always enjoyed teaching myself to mm -hmm. awesome. edit or do these various things. And I guess over a longer period of time, I've been able to combine them all to together. Right. So you're bringing all the strands of you into this work, all of you, really into this creation. Yeah, I guess it's there there have been different projects. Some of them have been websites and some were music and some were videos and now they've kind of I've found a way to I guess enjoy doing all of those things as well. She said you've got the whole thing wrong. Well you look when everyone's gone. Hi ho what's happening on the hoises don't you know it's a pirate emergency. So those earlier projects that I mentioned, so Life Faker and um Flop starter, which I didn't mention. Um, did you build those yourself? Yeah, yeah. Um, it was oh. I guess um, it was a case of initially thinking that making a video was far beyond me, and also I was not. I don't have a performance background, so that is something that emerged over time as well. Mm -hmm. What's your vision, Ollie? What What would you like your work to do in the world? What impact would you like it to have over and above what it's already doing, which is inspiring people? Do you have an end point or an end goal? Um, well, I don't know if there's a there's ever an end point. I guess the end point for me is to be doing something that I like doing that also maybe needs doing and having that those two things working together. And I guess um at the moment with the songs for example what gets me to write one is something being a bit annoying me because it needs mm. communicating rather than starting with this song has to be about vampires because vampires are funny i guess it usually starts from something that's annoying me that needs to be I'm hoping that I can communicate in some way. So now you know our plan to this scale economy. Measure growth and happiness instead of GDP. Don't try to on the others, it's already too late. The next bloody drink is running in your veins. You know, in, uh, if we look back um, in time, many movements uh, rose on song. I mean, song's been integral to protest for millennia, hasn't it? Do you think? Yeah. Um, I was interested that I, I told someone the other day, um, is what do you do? I started doing novelty songs and their, their question was, 
oh, is it political? Which I found like an interesting question because it's probably not, maybe it's quite, maybe music is slightly less political today. And I don't, I don't know, but I assume that maybe, maybe it was. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, the dragon of climate change had come to slay the beast and greed and the dragon will be done. You are so bold and audacious. You go out there and you do what you do. You bring all of yourself and things that uh, anger you righteously, you know, or, or seem unjust. You sing about them. You 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 mobilize people. You you spread awareness. You you act. What would you say to others who are perhaps in the shadows, yearning, champing to do something, but a little scared? What would you say? What 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 would you say to for them to unleash their lie and their audacity? Um, audacity. Well, the audacity part. I um, I always think that the. I, I know when I make projects for other people, sometimes the question of like, what if we get sued for this or something comes up? And I always think the risk of being sued is a lot lower than the risk of just something not getting noticed at all. Yes. Um, so I guess that's where that, I mean, until the point where I get sued, that's how I think about it. Um, and I guess, yeah, I, I, I just, yeah, quite strongly believe that with the with the climate crisis, for example, it won't all be people doing what they traditionally think of as protest. Protest, although I think that's a hugely important thing. I think it, I think there's a thing that we, we can all do, which is just switching what we do um, or what we're good at and focusing it around that issue. Mm -hmm. Because, yeah, if we all I think that we have to give up our dreams to work on the climate crisis it's quite a hard sell yes absolutely i love that so bring everything bring dreams bring bring everything uh into this climate lane uh, for humanity for planet for equality so are you uh, are you a an extrovert b an introvert i'm just kidding. um i'm definitely an introvert this dude said to me, You talk about the climate, but you wear clothes. What's the carbon footprint on those? So I stripped down from head to toe, gave that nudist life a go. But as soon as I got undressed, I found myself under arrest. Paid a fine for the crime. Maybe we should just work close, work close. You're not a hypocrite for wanting to change a world and what you exist. Work close, work close. Just take it from me It's hard to fight the system with just nudity I'm not saying follow fat I can tell, because I'm one too And there's something very thoughtful about the way we roll in the world And the work that, the way that we are And I think this is the age of the introvert We need all of introverts' voices Get out of the shadows Stop feeling like you're not, you haven't got it You're not showing Come and bring your thinking and your thoughts and your, that depth to the world and share what you have to share is what I feel. Do you feel that? Yeah, the age of an introvert is a nice, something I hadn't thought about. But uh, yeah, it, um, I think for me, certainly like, well, the the work I do is sort of sort of vi vicarious extrovert, being a vicarious extrovert sometimes. But right. um, yeah. Definitely, some people need to pipe down. <laughs> I mean, that's true, but that wasn't where I was going with that. It was more to bring yeah. the introverted minority onto the mics and uh, out there to, to, to talk as well, um, to balance things up a little bit. Any final thoughts that you want to share with the audience? Is there anything that you want to say about the world, about your work, about the climate, the predicament we're in? The floor is yours. I think we all just need to get a, get a move on, don't we? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. I'll put a link if it's okay with you to your to any channels that you want to share and um, so that people can find you, follow, follow along, listen to your songs and be inspired. Because you you certainly inspire me. I love what you do. It's so good to meet you. Um and thank you for joining us on this. Oh, thank you. Thanks for having me. My pleasure.